My brothers, my sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples of Aaron about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones, who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the We've all heard the saying that Rome was built in a day. And no great work can be achieved without a long and patient effort. Look at the art of Michelangelo, or the Beethoven Concerto, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, the Red Sox. <laughs> How many brush strokes to transfer the last judgment from Michelangelo's imagination to the sanctuary wall of the Sistine Chapel. And not just the world's teeming artists and leaders, but every person, every person is, is involved in a work of great significance, needing persevering courage to see it through to a successful conclusion. And that work is part of our salvation. And to achieve it, we must cooperate with God and, in a sense, struggle with God. Today, I'm going to invite you to listen to a man who has cooperated and struggled with God. Dennis is a faithful parishioner here in the parish who generally attends the 11 o'clock mass. He is married to a wonderful woman. Together they're raising their two grandchildren. He would love to fully participate here at St. Catherine Parish and make it more welcoming for those people who face disabilities and or challenges. So I wanted to introduce Dennis by saying your perseverance and your loyalty inspired me. And I believe that your words will inspire all of us today. So thank you for being here, guys. Hello, my name is Jesse Knight, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes today about the exposed project church more accessible to people with mobility. Some might think, well, it has a ramp outside. Well, that's true, it does have a ramp. But when I was moving to about six years ago from a construction accident where I broke my neck and became a paraplegic and can't walk, and I was in a manual wheelchair when my wife had to push me up and down that ramp. She struggled because it was very steep. There are a lot of Christians here that have walking disabilities, whether it is from knee, hip, back, or other issues. 
Or even seen as if he was walking with the cane, with just the rail to hold on to, to go up and down the rail. Now that's the only weather for that. Well, hold on. Even when I do get inside, there are only about four spots where the wheelchair could be almost out of the way. Then we have the church hall to talk about. When my wife completed RCIA, they had a celebration in the church hall downstairs. I was carried down the stairs and up the stairs by Father Paul and four other parishioners in my manual chair. I am glad they had strong backs. I didn't even try to get into the small bathroom with the narrow door as well as down there. I have volunteered for about three years now for a vacation Bible school, but unable to get into the hall for all the activities in morning prayer. So I stay outside for the games, and pray for nice weather. One year we had to use Bob Paul's garage for the game time because of the rain. Before I was injured, accessibility was not something I thought about every day. But now seeing more and more people who have different needs and abilities, I hope I am speaking for a lot of people in asking for your support in helping make our church more accessible for our parishioners and hopefully many more who cannot, cannot access it the church now because of the steers and the ramp and the time. progress we've made since we, you know, my public to announce the drive, we've already raised over $500,000 in pledges, which is really amazing. And what we'd like to do is, you know, invite you to consider making a pledge to our fund drive. Somebody asked me last night, well, can I just give an outright check? Well, we love those. <laughs> But some people might want to pay over a three-year period, and that's fine, too. Uh, but I want to tell you a little story. You know, one of my maybe cars arrived at St. Elizabeth's soon. Um, they, they started a fun drive about the same time we did it. Uh, Father told me the other day, oh, we've already, we've already raised the 1.7 million. So um, I think we can do it. Uh, so I'm pretty confident. I'm an optimist by nature, so, um, but I keep praying. And you know, the scriptures today say we persevere. So you might hear me talk about it because I'm going to persevere to see this through. So I want to thank you for your attention. And again, I think people like Dennis, you know, can give us a whole different perspective of why the needs are, are apparent. Uh, so I want to thank Dennis. Again, for Dennis to be here before Masses gives you an idea of what we do on this. And uh, what I'm going to do is probably throw it to the next deacon class. And uh, we can preach at more of our Masses. Thank you a lot. Let us stand out.